If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glistener Elf, here with a standard deck tech for you. Something that I was talking about uh, as soon as I found out that this was spoiled. It's the card Aether Squall Ancient. And I made a video at the time saying, I think you can make a deck out of this. I think that this could be an archetype. Uh, decks that revolve around Aether Squall Ancient and abusing it. So, yeah, you can read it up there. But it's flying, you gain 3 energy on each of your upkeeps, and if you pay 8 energy, you sort of get a whelming wave effect. You get to return all other creatures to their owner's hands. So yes, that includes yours, except the Aether Squall Ancient. And other creatures, not so much. So it's not quite Whelming Wave, but you get the idea. You get to keep your Aether Squall Ancient and keep beating in with a 6-6 Flyer. And that's especially good in this format because the only creatures that should be able to block normally after that are Landfolk, none of which have Flying. None of the uh, Landfolk in Standard right now have either Flying or Reach. So after that, it's just Flash creatures. That makes Aether Squall Ancient pretty awesome, I think. Pretty good. In and of itself, that's fine. It's 7 mana for every 2 or 3 turns, bounce the rest of the field and swing in for 6. That's all well and good, but that isn't in and of itself broken. But, but, we can add in creatures that are either blue or colorless, or whatever other color you like to splash, that make energy when they enter the battlefield. And we have a few of those. We have Thriving Turtle, 1 mana, you get 2 energy. It's an O3, which is good enough at blocking most of the time, but or against low to the ground decks. You probably want to swing in once or twice just to get its toughness up a bit. That way it can block, say, Kalitas, um, or I don't know. Just anything it can survive what's it called? Harness Lightning. It can survive cards like those. But long story short, you're not using Thriving Turtle as a win condition, you're getting energy from it. If you are using it as a win condition, I mean Kudos, but that's not its main goal, that's not its purpose. Now, this card also for, serves a similar function, one mana, you gain two energy, and you can tap it, Minister of Inquiries that is, and pay an energy. Target player puts the top three cards of their library into their graveyard. Again, not truly a win condition, I did in testing when I was playing against Rakdos Vampires, use it to win. But that's very corner case. So Aether Squall Ancient uh, bounces the rest of the field, but they have a haste creature, so I can't swing with Aether Squall Ancient or I'll lose. I lose that race. Uh, Minister of Inquiries, once I come around back to my turn, I uh, tap it for its ability, make them mill three, and then bounce everything with Aether Squall Ancient, play it again, scrub, rinse, repeat, you can mill them out. That is something that you can do. Again, though, that's not its intended purpose. Oh, I apologize for that. Next we have two mana. This is our Sigil Starfish. This is Aether Theorist. It comes in, generates three uh, energy for you, and you can tap it, pay an energy, scry one. On a 1-3 body, that blocks well enough. Uh, just speaks for itself. Having one power means that there are a few creatures that it'll deal with, but for the most part we're just using it to generate energy, to scry. All of these cards up to this point, they're really just for energy, and lest you think that we need them just for Aether Squall Ancient, that is not true at all actually, although they do certainly help because they give us the ability to use Aether Squall Ancient's ability uh, immediately, bounce everything instead of having to wait for its upkeep a turn or two later. So that is certainly alright, you're going to want to have about 8 energy, at least 8 energy, when Aether Squall Ancient is cast, but we do have a few other ways uh, to use the energy, but before we get to those, before we do, the alternate win condition in the main board is we have two Coax from the Blind Eternities. So you get to get an Eldrazi card out of your sideboard, or exile, but usually the sideboard, and go for your win conditions. Uh, if, for whatever reason, Aether Squall Ancient doesn't suffice, there are some decks that by their very nature are going to be especially good against what you're doing, especially those that are running Reflector Mage. Because if you bounce Reflector Mage, they can in turn bounce your Aether Squall Ancient right back. That does not itself make a win. There are ways around that. I'm not personally, I'm not running any counter spells in the main board. You can go into side, you can change up the deck. This is going to be harder on getting Aether Squall Ancient out. 
If you need to, if your meta uh, deserves it, you can switch some of these out for, say, mainboard negates or revolutionary rebuffs, aka worse mana leak, etc. Uh, but there are times when you want to go and get an Emrakul or an Ulamog, which are in the sideboard. Emrakul, the promised end, and Ulamog, the ceaseless hunger. For those decks that just simply cannot be beaten by Aether Squall Ancient. We have a few other ways to get around this, but I'll... I'll show you in just a moment. So next we have our draw package. If it sounds like we're going through this quickly, I am on a, a bit of a tight time, so I apologize. Anticipates, I'm running these as a four of, just helps us to make more keepable hands, find the cards we need in a given moment, and just gives us more reach through our deck. It's fine to have Strictly Worse Impulse, this is standard, that's good enough. Next we have Era of Innovation. Now, I've act I'm re-recording this deck tech because I did not give this card enough credit uh, the first time around. Shoutouts to SBMTG, Strictly Better MTG, uh, for showing me the awesomeness that is Era of Innovation. Whatever you do, don't pay too much attention to whenever an artifact or artificer enters the battlefield, you may pay one. That is true, that is a thing, and there are artifacts in here, and there is an... Artifi no, there are no artificers in here, never mind. Uh, so you're not really using it for that. But your creatures make energy anyway. It is certainly possible that you can just play this as a two mana, sorcery speed, treasure crew. I mean, I was about to say ancestral recall. <laughs> uh, you can just pay two mana and get three cards out of it. Immediately, there's no tap it, there's no pay any mana as well, it's just Pay six energy, which you can get to that easily enough. Draw three cards. Ta-da! As my daughter would say, ta-da! So these are your, uh, these can comprise your uh, card draw package, your suite of card draw. Now, in order to stall the game, we do have Engulf the Shore, which is beneficial to you and detrimental to them. So return to their owner's hands. All creatures with toughness less than or equal to the number of islands you control. Spoiler alert: We only have islands. Uh, 24 to be exact. So yes, you do slow the opponent down. It is instant speed, so you can do this during combat or whatnot. Or do this at the end of their turn so they don't replay the creatures. Yada yada yada. You get the idea. Uh, but also you bounce your creatures to get more energy out of them. Four mana could be seven energy. That seems pretty sweet, especially since we don't need it just for Aether Squall. We can use it for Era of Innovation or this other card, which SBMTG thinks of as a win condition, and it could be, but I think of it as just a stall card. Uh, I run two Dynavolt Towers. By the way, uh, everything so far is a four of, except two Coast and Blind Eternities, and two Dynavolt Tower, just in case I didn't mention that. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, you get two energy. Again, don't get hung up on that part. You only have eight instants in the deck, and let's see, two sorceries? Two Cokes? That's it. But you're not using it for that. Your creatures are giving you the energy that you can use regardless. It is possible that you can just build up enough lightning bolts that you can kill the opponent that way. But what we really care about, most of the time anyway, is just killing our opponent's creatures, including the aforementioned Reflector Mage. This is part of why I don't have mainboard counterspells. One of the cards about which I'm worried is dealt with by Dynavolt Tower. So that is certainly true. Now it's only two of. You can put more in the sideboard if you feel that you need those uh, more readily, or more quickly. And next, so you could run, this is sort of a, a flex slot. I like to run ramp in here, and so as a result you could run uh, Hedron Archive. Four mana, generates two, and you can pay two and tap it, draw two cards. Instead what I'm running, and I'm trying this out, is Cultivator's Caravan. It is one mana cheaper. It, of course only generates one less. Now it does generate blue mana, so that is important, but what I care about mostly, primarily, is it has crew 3 and becomes a 5-5, five five, which means that when we get enough creatures out, and by the way this is another reason to incentivize you to uh, buff up your thriving turtle, you can use this as a, well not a surprise blocker, they see it coming, but because you have a 5-5 five five to block, you can slow the game down. You can make combat a lot harder for the opponent, which maybe stalls you for long enough. That's the idea, anyway. In addition, remember that with Aether Squall Ancient, you... Okay, so Aether Squall Ancient bounces everything. You replay your, your turtle. I guess the turtle doesn't matter for this. Your minister, your Aether Theorist. And if you can get three ministers or theorists together, then you can crew the Cultivator's Caravan and swing in for 11 
because six from the Aether Scroll Ancient, five from the Cultivator's Caravan, and so that also gives you a little bit more damage as well. Is that enough? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, but, you know, that's an option for you. You can try that out, certainly. Uh, and maybe Hadron Archive is better. It does give you more to do in the late game, simply by virtue of letting you see more cards. Uh, but this is what I'm trying out. Now for the sideboard, obviously these are in the sideboard, Imrakul and Ulamog. You don't actually have to pick these two. I'm not crazy about Imrakul. And what you could do is you could make it where one of them is a big Eldrazi like Imrakul or Ulamog, and the other is a smaller one, one that say works with Emerge, Elder Deep Fiend, uh, the one that gets instants and sorceries back from your graveyard. Uh, I don't think that anyone really cares about the flash one. That gives hexproof, uh, wretched griff, whatever, you can take a big one and a small one so that at any time you play coax, even earlier in the game, you could still have a creature uh, to use. So that's just an option for you. I think that Emrakul and Ulamog serve very different roles. If you want to make Emrakul a little bit easier, even though you're a monocolor deck, you can throw in some evolving wilds, or a land that sacrifices itself, whatever it may be. Uh, for example, uh, Blighted... the blue one. The blue Blighted Land, uh, just for later game card draw. Downside of that, you water down and gulf the shore. But that would give you a land in your graveyard more readily. However, we have enough card draw that we might get a land, and especially with Aetherswell Ancient bouncing our creatures too, it's possible we might get a land in just from discarding at end of turn from having so many cards. Uh, but these are just some options. And then Ulamog deals with problem permanence, gets you out of uh, board states where Emrakul just unfortunately doesn't um, say against the well I don't know just throwing that out there uh, for the sideboard other cards for the 13 that aren't found with uh, our wish our <laughs> coax from the blind attorneys feels like the legacy wishes and glittering wish we have aether membrane you can run a number of cards here you can run tightening coils you can run the one drop flash one uh, that gives minus X minus O based on number of cards in the graveyard uh, from somewhere in Shadows Block. Just something to slow the opponent down in the early game and keep you alive. This one is my preference uh, because it just does also generate two energy even though it's not as strong minus six minus seven loses flying as tightening coils and it doesn't have the potential to get as large as the uh, the one from Shadows Block. But that's an option for you. Unfortunately any aura will feel bad when you're having to bounce things with Engulf the Shore and Aether Squall Ancient, uh, which is why we run, in addition, Dampening Pulse. Now this is my four of in the sideboard. Uh, it's, it's slow, but standard isn't all that fast, notwithstanding just a few decks. If they're trying to go wide, say with a token strategy or vampires, this gives you something to just keep their creatures from doing out, doing anything. Creatures your opponent's control get minus O, oh, minus one. This doesn't care whether you're bouncing, uh, and it only hits your opponent's creatures. So that's uh, something to look into. Next we have two summary dismissals uh, just to deal with Imrakul and its trigger uh, so they don't take our turn, yada yada yada. This is really the only answer that we have to Imrakul because we don't play white, we don't play stasis snare. Now into some alternate win conditions for you. And by the way, negate as well. I don't think I have, yeah. So negate's supposed to be in there as a three of. It just deals with a lot, including planeswalkers, which we have a bit of a hard time uh, messing with planeswalkers. Uh, we have between Dynavolt Tower and Cultivator's Caravan, Aether Squad. I mean, it's possible, but it's not easy for us to deal with walkers. Uh, for alternate win conditions, we have Confiscation Coup, which doesn't feel good with Aether Squall Ancient or Engulf the Shore, to be sure, because if you uh, use Aether Squall, for instance, they'll get their creature back, right? Um, so that isn't great, but it hits artifacts and creatures, so it could be better than mind control on that front. You gain four energy in a deck that already has so much energy, and you take control, you make so much energy in this deck, you can take Eldrazi. Not kidding, you can do that. Uh, so it does serve as an alternate win condition, potentially. I very much like that, I appreciate that. Now against control decks, we have a one of Sphinx of the Final Word. Can't be countered, flying, hexproof, instant sorceries you control can't be countered by spells or abilities. This just outright wins the game against so many control decks. They need to find their wrath spells, like planar outbursts, like fumigate, or they cannot deal with you. And so this is uh, an exceptional card against them, but only a one of because it's a little slow, to be sure. And something that I'm trying out, this actually makes the full 15, I believe. Uh, yes, that's correct. But, 
Something I would like to try out, maybe fitting in somewhere, is Aetherworks Marvel. Yes, whenever a permanent you control is put in the graveyard, you get an energy, but again, you make so much, you don't usually care about that. You can tap it, pay six energy, look at the top six cards, and cast one without having to pay its mana cost. You make enough energy in this deck, you can do this over and over again, fairly readily. Uh, this is another reason, if you're, especially if you're splashing for another color, say white, because I think white would be awesome for what you're doing here. Uh, your fetch lands, your uh, evolving wilds, uh, can go right ahead and fill you up on energy here. Aether Hub, if you want to do that, you get the idea. This just gives you another out against... It lets you overpower the control decks, is how I like to think of it. It gives you some selection, and yes, you can cast it, and yes, they can counter it, but you'll do this over and over and over and over again, and eventually they'll run out of answers. Uh, you will not run out of threats, they'll run out of answers, at least, at least usually. And so that's the deck. It's super budget. A lot of these, I say super budget, a Coax and the Eldrazi, I would imagine probably take up more than the rest of the deck combined. I would be almost certain about that. Uh, you can try out some other ways to go about this. If you don't have Coax and the Eldrazi, you can run more Dynavolt Towers. You can try putting Sphinx in the main board. Uh, you can try, I don't know, Crush of Tentacles, Confiscation Coup in the main board. Um, splashing another color, say White for Sky Whaler Shot and Gideon's Reproach, I think it's called, to stall the game. And also some higher answers when you get up. Uh, even just Eldrazi Displacer, just look at this, bounce, make more energy, make more energy, over and over again. Um, that can be pretty exceptional as well. I, I don't know, white just seems, oh, and Gideon, uh, as an actual win condition. You notice I don't have any walkers in here. I don't know that any of the mono blue ones are good enough. Dovin Bond also doesn't really win you the game. He keeps you from losing, he doesn't really win you the game, but those are some options as well. Gideon, however, actually does. Just outright close it out. Hopefully we'll be getting an Ajani coming up in Aether Revolt, because we've seen him. I would love to see another White Walker coming up. Alright, thank you, uh, YouTube. Thank you, Magic Community. I will see you later. Take care. Bye-bye.